Hi, Amber. Hi. <laughs> so I wanted to start with you to talk about the meticulous and detailed way with which you started your career. Oh, gosh. Wow. I don't know if I've actually created it as much as just let it happen to mm -hmm. me. You know, I started out doing improv, and then that led to doing voice work. And then I worked with people and was easy to work with, I think, is really what the key was. I would show up and do my job, and then I just kept working. How did, uh, like, the voiceover? Yeah, I didn't even know that it was a job people did. I mean, I knew people did voices on radio and stuff, and there was uh, voiceover on commercial. And, mm -hmm. you know, I always kind of thought of voiceover as, like, um, announcer voice. Right. And then I think there was kind of a change like in the 90s where people were like, we don't want announcer voice anymore. We want regular people voice. Mike Schatz, who we both know, uh, works at an ad agency and he needed people to come in and do some voice work for commercials. And so I showed up and did a few things here and there. That's where I kind of learned how to be in a studio and how to mm. talk into a microphone. So then I did some radio spots for different radio uh, stuff. And then I met the guys that now make Archer. I did Frisky Dingo with them mm -hmm. on, on Adult Swim. And then they, after that got canceled, um, they were like, we're gonna make another show. Do you wanna do it? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do anything. And then it ended up being a really big show on FX. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey. Cyril, you want a fresh one? I do not, no. Then shut your fist hole and show Miss Archer how I did on the IFAB. The ISIS field agent aptitude battery? You took it? You aced it? No, but this can't. You cheated! How? Everyone watched me take it! Under sterile conditions, by the way. Well... What? Punk-ass bitches. The funny thing is, is since then, mm -hmm. as soon as Archer kind of became a hit, I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna sit back and the phone's gonna be ringing off the hook. And that's not at all what's happened. So um, while that job came to me very easily, others have not. You know, like I remember auditioning for, and I didn't even get this job. I just had to look stupid for a job I didn't even get paid to do. But they wanted me to pretend that I was being like, like blown by like a wind machine. Um, they're like, you know, like, really do the thing. And I'm like, oh, oh, like this? And they're like, yeah, like that. So they had just like 50 people come in and do that. And then somebody got hired to do that job and paid, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars. And I was like, well, there's just another one in the can I didn't get. <laughs> well, the, um, the character in Archie, mm -hmm. in Pam Pooby, how much now of, a, of an input or a voice mm -hmm. do you have in her? creation or direction? In the beginning, the character was, I think all the characters were pretty, um, they had their job. And I think Pam in the beginning was kind of like the butt of the joke. That's what she was there for. And I think as Adam, who's the creator, and he's pretty much the sole writer of most mm. of the series, which is crazy, because yeah. most comedies have teams of writers. Um, but I think that as he got to know all the actors better, it informed the characters. Mm -hmm. And I think that just knowing me better kind of informed the character, but I am not like, hey, Adam, this is what Pam should be doing. Mm -hmm. And I never mm -hmm. really was. There's been a couple of times where I had a little bit of input, but I think more it's that he just was aware that I was capable of doing more and that the character was capable of doing more and that's kind of how she developed. Hmm. Yeah. You're, you're mm -hmm. here recording it. Right. And then everyone else is wherever. Yeah, right? so the show is animated here. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, we record Lucky, who's also on the show, who's an Atlanta actor, Lucky Yates, who plays Dr. Krieger. Um, we go into the studio here in Atlanta with the director and the producers, and then everybody else is in LA and New York, and they just get patched in with their, through their headphones, the director is in oh, their okay. ear. And the cool thing is too, is if you go to Floyd County Productions where they're making the show, they employ so many artists. Like it is a huge employer of artists and they've got a big thing with SCAD where they're just taking kids out of art school. And they're just like, we can't get enough of these art school oh, kids. Cool. Um, so it's a really amazing place. And people are coming from all over the country to work at Floyd County. That's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, I think that people are surprised to find out the show's made in Georgia, or made in Atlanta. They, they know because they have the tag on the end of the show, right, so pe right. people more and more are starting to realize that Atlanta's a hub for television and film. Um, so I think that they are surprised to find that we live in Atlanta, but not as much as they used to be, because now lots of people live in Atlanta. Right. And what have been some convention experiences for you? Because you've done everything from like San Diego's Comic Con to... Fargo Con. So, you know, what is that experience like for you? It's really fun. Like we, like you said, we've done all kinds of different sizes of cons and FX will take us to the huge like Comic Con in San Diego or mm -hmm. Comic Con New York. And um, then we're with the whole cast, which we don't get to see very often because we don't work together. 
Um, so that can be really fun and interesting. Like John Benjamin's an interesting man, and you know Judy Greer's like the nicest person. And meeting the fans is really cool. Uh, like I was just in Kansas City, and a man asked me to sign his arm, and I was like, cool, yeah, great. And then. Like two days later on Instagram, he posted a picture where he'd had my my autograph tattooed on his arm, and I was he's, like, "That was a bad choice." <laughs> he's got Amber Nash yeah. tattooed on his arm. Yeah, wow. And it wasn't even—I didn't even do a particularly good job. I didn't even try very hard, but he was into it. So, have you ever thought about moving to LA after Archer became such a hit? I mean, yeah, and even before, I, as, as an actor, I was like, maybe I should go to LA or New York, and. Um, what happened was I just kept working here. So I was like, well, why would I leave if I'm working to go to another, and also I'm an improviser. And so the place where improvisers all decide they need to move is Chicago, because mm -hmm. Second City's right. there. And I was like, well, I have plenty of opportunity here. Why would I go somewhere else? Um, to climb that ladder. Yeah, exactly. So I think it actually worked out, thankfully, that I stayed here, because I, I don't think Archer would have ever happened for me if I hadn't. I'm just an Atlanta person. And I still do improv at the same improv theater that I've been doing improv at for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you, do you think that because you mentioned, you know, improviser and, mm -hmm. and having that improv home here in Atlanta, Dad's Garage, mm -hmm. do you think it's important for an actor to have some type of theater home base to, you know, artistically call home? I think that, I don't think I would have stayed in Atlanta if I didn't have, if I hadn't had that, like, artistic home. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was because I could go work on other people's projects, but I could always go back to my theater and do stuff that was... Um, challenging or interesting or mm. was like up my alley content wise or in the world of comedy and so I think that's what kept me happy to be in the city that I was in and I think mm -hmm. that's important for a lot of people. Do you have any advice that you give to Georgia actors? It's hard. I think it, think a lot of Georgia actors for us we're all still trying to figure it out too and, and be like okay so where are we in this and what are we doing but we're, we're decided that we're gonna stay in Georgia and so I think that you have to be tough I think that you have to be you have to know that George is where you want to be, not be apologetic about it, mm -hmm. and be willing to do all different kinds of work, you know? Because sometimes there might be some lean times in between bigger jobs, and so maybe you do a theater show for a while, or maybe you're doing more commercial work, or even, you know, uh, extra work. I've gotten opportunity because of Archer to audition for stuff, but I think that they're fully on, like, she's in this realm, and I have to work just as hard as mm. any other actor without a resume in on-camera stuff, because I really don't have a resume in on-camera work. So I kind of have to start from scratch like any other actor would. Hmm. But no, you, you did uh, Heart of America, which yeah. was your yeah. stream, it's streaming, right? Yeah, through, well, it's, through... yeah, it's a, it's a um, what do you call those things? Web. A web series. Web series. What do those kids call them? <laughs> A web series for the internet yeah for the internet um yeah and it came from me being like i can keep auditioning forever for roles that like people aren't going to cast me in or that i don't necessarily get excited about or i can make a project that i'm really excited about and so i talked to my husband and was like hey i want to do this he's the artistic director at dad's garage he's also a writer and he was like okay me and my writing partner will write something for you and so they wrote a show where i got to play four different characters and it was super fun super fun to do so that's what we've been doing that's how i'm like doing more on camera work is by doing stuff that's my own stuff your own stuff yeah, yeah. You know, I'd like to get to the grocery store before it closes. We're running low on some supplies. I just want to say how proud I am of you, Bigfoot. You've made such incredible progress, and you've really cut down on your drinking and drugging. They say that men with big feet have big penises. But isn't it ironic that the creature literally called Bigfoot has the smallest dick of them all? <laughs> Anywho, bye. What we tried to do is we're like, we released it all and then we're like, we're gonna pitch this and try to get some traction and make it into a show. And that's really hard. It's, a lot, it's like acting. It's mm. like, what, what's another way where I can go into a room a bunch of times and have people tell me no? Let's do <laughs> as many of those as we possibly can. We learned a lot. And so since then, we've made other projects. We made a short film. Nice. And, and then that's a different process because you go to festivals and do that kind of thing. And we've made a couple other short things that aren't films, but just kind of one-off sketch kind of stuff. And next, we're moving into making a feature. It's kind of oh, just nice. tried our hand at a lot of different things to see what works and what we're good at and what people want. Now, with all your experience as an actor, um, I just wanted to ask what your worst gig 
experience may have been? Wow, this goes way back. Okay. Okay, this was one of my very first acting jobs. It's so old that floppy disks were still okay. a thing, okay? <laughs> All right. And I got, it was like a, but they, I think they hired like 20 people and they put us in these big foam floppy disk costumes and we're like, okay, so you're gonna go out into the streets of Atlanta and like bother people basically. <laughs> and we had no handlers. We couldn't really see out of these, these costumes and it was Atlanta in August. So mm -hmm. we literally almost died. It was, it was very dangerous. But I was like, you know what? This acting thing, there's something to it. <laughs> what is your hope for the future, Amber Nash? Oh boy. As a Georgia actor. Well, I'm excited to do a feature. I'm mm -hmm. excited to keep growing as an actor. And my dream would be to one day be making my own comedy show that I was the star of in Atlanta. And I went to work every day on a comedy show. That's the dream. And I think it could happen. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe one day, you never know. So anybody watching? Anybody watching? We need the Amber Nash show. That's right. <laughs> good, good. Thanks for watching this segment of Georgia Actors. For more Georgia Actors, subscribe to our channel here, Georgia Actors. If you have a question for a Georgia actor, put it in the comments section below and we'll ask a future Georgia actor. Thank you so much. Oh, I need more. Waiter!